I did not expect another delay for Cyberpunk 2077. CD Projekt Red really sounded sure that they were going to hit that September date. Like on May 29th, they said to investors that the release continues to be scheduled for September 17th and that the whole team is working really hard to deliver on that date. But well now, a few weeks later, they decided to move it to November 19th. A very big day in the middle of that always crowded holiday season. And don't get me wrong, like they will be fine. But I can tell you that some companies aren't happy with that, especially Ubisoft. In this video I want to go in depth on the enormous impact of this release date delay, in particular on Watch Dogs Legion, and also compare it to the next gen consoles that are of course expected to launch around that time too. This is episode 10 of the Sunday Your Game Show, I'll of course answer one of your questions at the end of the video as well, so a like would be super appreciated. And let's go. You can win Cyberpunk 2077 in my June giveaway for a 2020 game of your choice on your platform of choice by clicking the special link in the pinned comment and being a subscriber of the channel. I will email the winner then in early July. You could say that Cyberpunk 2077 is now a next gen launch game, like I would not be surprised if one or maybe two of the new consoles are already out by the November 19th date. The PlayStation 4 released on November 15th, 2013 in the US and that was a Friday and the Xbox One released one week later in the US. I would not be surprised if it was the other way around this time and that Xbox actually wants to release first to be the first console where you can play next gen games and high chance that CD Projekt Red already knows the Series X release date. I mean that big Keanu Reeves reveal was on the Microsoft stage and they've been partners for a really long time now. So is November 19th the date for the Xbox Series X meaning that Cyberpunk will be a launch title for the console? It's hard to say, again consoles typically release on a Friday but still high chance that Cyberpunk will be part of the launch lineup for both systems. Good to know though is that we will be playing the old gen version on a next gen console because CD Projekt Red confirmed that the more robust next gen upgrades will be coming to PS5 and Series X in 2021. But yeah, we should still like notice improvements when playing it through backwards compatibility on the new consoles, but it might not be as big as we expect. Still though, without a native next gen version, Cyberpunk will be the biggest game that everyone will be getting when they buy a PS5 or Series X. Like I feel sorry for Godfall that is a launch game for the PlayStation 5. I think it looks pretty promising, but I don't know if people will bother if they can also play Cyberpunk 2077 to get their RPG fix, especially if both games are $60. Like I think Cyberpunk will clearly be the best value for everyone who buys a new console. I would not be surprised if maybe Halo Infinite gets delayed because of this new Cyberpunk 2077 release date. Like Xbox has the marketing deal with this game, so why not market your console as the best place to play Cyberpunk 2077 and then release Halo another time for that second push. Sure exclusives are super important, but if you want all the eyes on Halo again and try and bring back the series to previous highs, then it might not be smart to release the new game when everyone is focused on cyberpunk. But the publisher with the biggest problem right now is Ubisoft. They were going to be the only one with a massive open world game or maybe two at the launch of the next gen systems. They could have owned that space just like Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag did back in 2013 when the PS4 and Xbox One released. That game reached shipments of 10 million units in two months. Yves Guimot, the CEO of Ubisoft, was saying to investors after that point that Black Flag was the best rated game of the Christmas season for PS4 and Xbox One. And yeah, I think that Assassin's Creed Valhalla is shaping up to be amazing, but I don't think it will rate higher than the next game from CD Projekt Red. Cyberpunk will get all the shine and a ton of sales, Although I don't think that Valhalla will hurt the most, 
no Watch Dogs Legion is likely in some serious trouble right now. And then I don't mean in terms of quality or development, like what I saw and played at E3 last year was very ambitious and I cannot wait for them to basically re-reveal the game again during the Ubisoft Forward event and see what has been improved and also changed with the extra development time. But yeah, this game was planned for this year. Ubisoft had three AAA games planned by the end of 2020 and Jason Schreier said that he heard that indeed both Assassin's Creed and Watch Dogs were planned for this same holiday period. And in a perfect world, Cyberpunk would have the September month, then Assassin's Creed Valhalla would release in October with next-gen versions at the launch of the new systems, as was already confirmed, and then Watch Dogs Legion would debut alongside the next-gen consoles. That was actually a rumor from a website, Video Game Chronicle, who has been right a couple of times before. But yeah, that's a very bad idea right now to launch Watch Dogs Legion an open world game with RPG elements in a futuristic city in November when you also got Cyberpunk 2077 in the middle of that month. Like sure, some people might prefer the third person perspective of Watch Dogs and the series is still big, like no denying that. But Ubisoft doesn't only want the fans, they want everyone, every mainstream person who maybe only buys a few games per year, those people can help the sales of games like Watch Dogs and Assassin's Creed to reach the 10 plus million that is kind of expected from these franchises. But achieving this will be very hard when there is a Rockstar style title releasing around the same time. Assassin's Creed Odyssey did really well despite releasing relatively close to Red Dead Redemption 2. It set sales records for an Assassin's Creed game that released during this generation. Good to note is that that was based on money earned, so including microtransactions. Origins likely sold more during launch, but made less money, if that makes sense. Odyssey launched three weeks before Red Dead Redemption 2, so there was quite some time between the titles. So I think that that is the only option that is likely. Watch Dogs Legion will not launch a few weeks after Cyberpunk, because then you are in December after Black Friday and miss the launch of the new consoles. Like, if you release in the holiday period, you want to be part of the launch lineup. So the end of October is really the final possible date in 2020 but aren't you then too close to Assassin's Creed Valhalla that seemed to have the mid-October spot like releasing your big open world game close to Cyberpunk is a bad idea but releasing both Assassin's Creed Valhalla and Watch Dogs Legion a few weeks apart is also very stupid these games cost hundreds of hours to complete and are meant to be played for a long time after launch so then people will have to choose so I really see no other option than to delay Watch Dogs Legion to 2021, find a nice February spot, give it room to breathe. This game had one of the longest development cycles ever for Ubisoft, like they started even before Watch Dogs 2 came out. So it will be more than 4 years by the time the game releases, maybe even more. It would be a shame to then put it out in a holiday period when all the eyes will be on another futuristic open world game. And Ubisoft then still has Valhalla as this big end of the year title. And Valhalla I think will do just fine. The most ideal situation would of course to put Watch Dogs Legion in September, like there are many Many possibilities there now. Avengers must be super happy because they got the whole September month for themselves in terms of big AAA mainstream releases. I think my GIF perfectly shows the internal reaction that Crystal Dynamics and Square likely had when they heard this delay announcement. September would be perfect now for Watch Dogs Legion, but I don't think it's realistic. Ubisoft already noted that they had a few weeks lost in terms of productivity thanks to COVID, so I can see them change development schedules and release Watch Dogs Legion two months before the initial planned date. And you would think that they were planning to announce the release date at their Ubisoft Ford event on July 12th, right? So do they now, in a short period of time, change the like end cards of the trailers and the marketing material, talk to the retailers and say, no, the game is not coming out in mid-November again? You would think so if mid-November was indeed the planned date. And I can't wait to see Assassin's Creed Valhalla gameplay and see what other games Ubisoft has to show. 
But I'm also curious, where are they going to put those three AAA games that they want to launch in the fall? Or maybe it's now two. And the other one is likely Gods and Monsters. Like, I can see them launch that this year as well. We'll do my predictions for the Ubisoft Fork event very, very soon. Likely in the next Sunday Your Game Show. So... Keep it locked for that. And at the end of every Sunday Your Game Show, I answer one of your questions that you put in the comments of my previous video. So if you have a question for next week's episode, then put it down below right now. Last week I got a comment from Reven who asked, If I buy the non-digital version of AZ Valhalla, can I still get the free upgrades for the PS5 and Xbox Series X? Like we talked about the free upgrade for Cyberpunk and for Destiny 2 already. And Valhalla will actually have a free upgrade on Xbox One. And I would be shocked if they did not do something similar on the PS5. But what is the case with like upgrades is that they have to see if you own the game. And the disc is like the only way you can show that you own the game. So if your console cannot read the disc, there's no way to know if you actually bought the game. And you actually likely need the PS4 disc to play the PS5 version of Valhalla. And we also got EA already actually saying something similar. Physical discs cannot currently be used to upgrade to discless consoles for Madden 21. So I don't think that if you have a physical version and buy a discless console that you do not get that free PS5 upgrade. So totally buy Assassin's Creed Valhalla digitally, then you will likely get the free upgrades. And when we know more about this, I'll of course let you know here on the channel. I can't wait to start like making Valhalla videos again. I really want to make a video and have something interesting to say. And right now it has been super quiet. They're saving everything for Ubisoft Forward. So can't wait for that. And after that I will have a ton to talk about, I'm sure. And in the meantime, you can also, if you want to have like a cool thing to listen to, uh, Assassin's Creed related, check out my Assassin's Cast podcast that I do with Jordan from It's Jordan Does. This week, episode 5, we talk about the future of AEC. We have some small Valhalla news, answer a question, do some predictions and way more. So it's up on iTunes and on Spotify. Totally check it out if you haven't already. And I will also put a download link in the pinned comment. For now, subscribe for everything on the future of Ubisoft games. Again, July is going to be very, very big. A like on the video would be super appreciated. And totally check out my previous video on everything we know so far about Watch Dogs Legion up to this point and ahead of that big reveal on July 12th. For now, I will speak to you next time and goodbye.